Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society. I love trees, don't you? One of my best memories in childhood is when my dad and I used to drive out into the country looking for little pine trees growing in the ditch. We knew the county would just cut them down or spray them to keep them back from the power lines. So we dug them up, we brought them home, we planted them on my parents' modest ponderosa. My dad loved and cared for them, and today those beautiful trees stand so, so tall. And I remember those tree planting days with dad every time I see them. So Justin Trudeau made a promise to plant two billion trees over a decade to take pipeline revenues and pour them into going green. So it sounds good, doesn't it? But there's only one problem. There's not enough land. Yeah, I know Canada is the second largest country in the world, but let's do a reality check. According to the forestry experts that I interviewed, we're simply not clearing or converting that much land requiring planting. And they said, if you're planning on planting them in urban areas, then you need a budget, a big one, for stand tending and maintenance. So let's do a bit of math. Two billion trees over a decade is about 200 million seedlings a year, or you'd need about 166,000 hectares per year of planting. Outside of forest harvesting, which is already being reforested with about 1 billion seedlings per year, where are you going to find an additional 166,000 hectares of land to plant? And there's already lots of professional tree planting going on. One expert said they're consulting on crop management of over 340 million seedlings this year. 340 million seedlings will reforest about 280,000 hectares of forest harvesting. That is enough to deal with the current harvesting, some plantation failures, and destruction of plantations by wildfire. It's not like planting trees is something new to Canada. So where could Justin Trudeau's forest land be found? The experts said that there is a transition zone between agriculture and forest in the areas of Alberta, Saskatchewan and Manitoba, which is managed right now as rough forage. The forestry people said that's about the only place you could pull off such an industrial scale forest conversion. And even if there was enough money to do that conversion, that would be roughly a dollar twenty-five per seedling with all the costs found it in, it would require a significant alteration to the taxation system in order to encourage landowners to take on such a conversion. Plus, if you run out the carbon footprint on such a conversion, you'd probably find out there's no benefit in the carbon investment. So everyone cheers over tree planting programs because they feel good and they're green. But putting a tree in the ground isn't magic. To make sure it takes root and grows well, the tree needs some management and nurturing. Otherwise, it will end up like that little scrawny thing you brought home from school in a cup, planted it, probably dead a week later. Politicians have never been good at picking winners, and they've only recently proven that they can't even run a recreational drug dispensary. So what makes anyone think they can manage a carbon gilt forest? Rather than wasteful virtue signaling on trees, why not spend the money on people who need it and deserve it? Like our veterans, who fought in the real wars and defended freedom and democracy, not virtue signalers in the alleged war on climate change. <laughs>